Hey everybody, it's Captain Kyle and I'm here with a masterpiece. Well, it's a knockoff masterpiece of Exhaust. Exhaust is the Diaclone version of, well, kind of, of Wheeljack. And they made a masterpiece version. So, looks beautiful in his box. We're gonna break it out, go through it, see if it's worth it, and if you wanna get it for your collection. Be right back. All right, so let's get this guy out of his packaging. Though I do have to say the box looks very nice. Nice picture on the front of the figure in both modes. Artwork on the side and another picture of him in vehicle mode. And then on the box it has a bunch of stuff you'll never ever read and most of it you can't. But the box looks genuine, but I happen to know this is not genuine, especially for the price. So let's get him out and we don't need you anymore. Of course we have some accessories in here, a collector card, instructions, and the figure in the plastic prison. Let's, gonna need the knife again. Now, in this case, Exhaust is a Decepticon. Though, one major difference between him and his Diaclone incarnation is the Diaclone one had Marlboro logos on it, which uh, is why he was called Marlboro Wheeljack. And I thought that would be fitting, you know, for a Decepticon. Let's give all the humans cancer. <laughs> But a very nice vehicle, comes with various accessories, and some of them look like something that Wheeljack would have. This thing here, which maybe if we look at the instructions, it'll tell me what the name of these guys are. And maybe it'll be in English so I can understand it. So the instructions seem very much genuine, though they are not. And let's see, this is the immobilizer. You actually need to assemble it, so it has a little base so they're basically giving him Wheeljack stuff because he came up with the immobilizer. So with the little assembly, we have the immobilizer. See if we can get it into focus. There we go, the immobilizer. Now you can see it in all its glory. It's got this blue base, which is supposed to, I guess, be floating. The body, an extension, and the ray emitter. He's also got a nice silver gun, two shoulder cannon things, and two missiles that obviously go into these shoulder launchers. So I usually like to do robot mode first if that's what it comes in, but let's check out the vehicle mode. And it rolls nicely. It is a nice looking vehicle. It's got the nice spoilers with Lancia on them, 598 on the sides, Decepticon symbol on the top, windshield wiper molded on, nice blue windows, red and blue. It, it looks very nice. Even the bottom, not very kibbly. You can't see a lot that indicates that this is not just a car. So you could definitely get somebody to think that this is just a car in your collection and you collect race cars. But very nice, rolls very nicely. I like it has the good flavor on the front. That's interesting. I wonder what it's referring to. There's the rear view. He's got the uh, tail lights. No actual license plate because if he's a race car, he doesn't really need a license plate. So rolls nicely, very nice looking. Lots of details on the car. I like it. But of course, he's a transformer, so we need to transform him. And because he's a masterpiece, I mean, I do have a masterpiece wheeljack over there. It's been a while since I transformed him, so I'm gonna look at these instructions. And there he is in his robot mode. Very handsome figure. And of course, we can outfit him with some weapons, put his shoulder missile launchers on there, and his gun. So he is fully outfitted. Looks very cool. It can even immobilize you. But let's check out the posability. I mean, I imagine that this is gonna be identical to the official release. So one of the reasons I do this is to make sure that it is as good as the official release. But let's see, first of all, he does have ankle rockers on the bottom here. So nice wide stance. Ankle rockers are a good thing. He can pretty much do just about a full Jean-Claude Van Damme, though it's not quite straight but it's pretty close. His legs go back and forth, he bends at the knee, he can go off to the side, do a nice side kick. Now, he does twist at the waist, so that's definitely a nice thing about this guy. His, I need to check here, because I think I was supposed to plug something in, and I might not have quite plugged in these things into his chest. Eh, they don't seem to want to plug in fully, so still, so far looks good. All right, upper body, the arms, He's got the wings in the way. <laughs> so you could normally go all the way around. If you do it all to the side, you can go all the way around. So that is not a problem. 
bends at the elbow, swivels. As you're moving his arms though, you gotta know these spoilers are gonna move a little bit. Now his hands open, which they need to in order to put the gun in his hand, you need to open it. But that's a nice thing. The fists also can turn, so he can go into all kinds of stylish poses. The head, of course, turns. It's nice and stiff. It's not too loose, so that's a nice thing. Now these missile launchers, I'm imagining that the masterpiece also did not actually launch. There's no way to launch these missiles out of here. So they push all the way through to the back. Speaking of the back, this is his back view. He's got the wings, as you can see, the rear part of the car covering his back. So you can kind of tell he's a car, but it doesn't look horrible. Definitely posable. So overall, a very cool member of the Decepticons. He's not a mercenary in this incarnation. And he's got Wheeljack's immobilizer. Or if he's in an alternate universe, he made it himself. Could be, who knows? And if you prefer, it looks like you can take the base off the immobilizer and he can carry it. So that's a weird looking weapon, but that's how it works. In his vehicle mode, it looks like you can take the missile launchers and put them on top, which is nice. And you can put the gun in the bottom of his vehicle mode. So probably should have looked at that before I transformed him. In the bag came these rear view mirrors that you can attach, very small. I generally don't attach them just because they're a pain in the ass and they can break. They're there if you wanna put them on your figure. The transformation wasn't too, too difficult, but there's again, a lot of little pieces that you gotta slide, but that's a masterpiece for you. I would say he's probably on par with the actual real thing. So this knockoff counterfeit is a good substitute if you don't happen to have access to the real one and you want to get them. It cost about with tax and I don't think there was shipping. It was like around 40 bucks. So not too expensive and a very handsome Decepticon. I like him, even though he's not selling cigarettes. So let me know your thoughts. If you have the original, how does this stack up? If you don't have the original, this might be a good alternative. Kind of an evil version of Wheeljack. Cause you know, we like our evil versions of characters. Oh, that's definitely not popped into place properly. My bad. But there he is, exhaust. I'm exhausted. But I definitely recommend him, 40 bucks. He's a very cool car if you wanna leave him in that mode and an awesome robot with lots of posability. But while you're mulling over this guy, if you do like Wheeljack, I actually have video over here where I go over the G1 counterfeit reissue of him. It might be worth looking into if you want to uh, add that to your collection. And of course, like, share, subscribe. Super thanks would be great. We'll see you next time. As always, have fun and good hunting.